Thank you for joining iMeet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 21st person to join the meeting. Now being recorded. Hey everybody, good afternoon. This is David Blake with uh, 2G Tech Talk. Sorry I missed you all last week. Um, we were at the Raymond James uh, conference down in Orlando uh, for our presentation. and uh, But we'll get right to it this week. We had a good week last week. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, we generally I talk about 20, 25 minutes. We'll go over uh, what's currently going on in the different indexes. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the different sectors that you may want to go into. And in uh, general, uh, we're just going to talk about, a little bit about whether we should sell in May and go away or whether we should uh, hang around this month. Um, after I talk for about 20 or 25 minutes, if you have some questions on different stocks or anything that we've talked about uh, during the presentation, uh, you can put them in the corner and we'll uh, try to go over them with the charts and uh, see if we can help you out a little bit. Okay, it's uh, May 2nd, and um, all the uh, market pundits are telling you right now to go ahead and sell in May and go away, which actually is kind of bad advice. If you uh, follow some of the things that are going on recently, the last time the uh, market was down in May was uh, 2011, I believe, maybe 2012. So we've had some pretty good years. I think 2015, the market was up um, about... We were up about nine and a half, ten percent at that that point. Uh, in 2014, we were up to ten percent. 2013, I think we were up seven and a half percent. So uh, that's that's going from May into uh, you know to the first of October. So that old adage that uh, just get out of dodge uh, doesn't seem to work anymore. But anyway, what I want to go into first, uh, we'll review last week what happened. Uh, it, was a, it was a good week. That was the best. Uh, uh, percentage performance the Dow's had uh, all year long. Um, after the uh, first round of the French election, uh, you know, pretty much assured that France won't be leaving the European Union, uh, we had a 448-point rally in the, on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, every sector participated except for utilities and REITs. Um, the strongest sectors going back last week were technology, healthcare, and consumer discretionary. That run pushed the uh, Dow Jones and the S&P 500 back above the 50-day moving average. It also put the Russell 2000 back above its 50 and 100-day moving average on its way to making a new high with the NASDAQ. Uh, the one uh, lone holdout that was the uh, kind of the redhead headed stepchild, the Dow Jones Transportation Index came up, bumped up against the 50 and 100-day moving average and could not bust through. Uh, we are a little bit higher today, but it's still not quite to the uh, point where we'd, we'd like to see the Dow Jones transport get up. We'd still like to see a little bit more uh, momentum behind that index. Okay, the NASDAQ punched a new all-time high, as did the uh, Russell 2000 on, I believe, Thursday. Uh, the major averages broke out of their trading range, which we'll look at um, as we've been talking a little bit about this since February, that they were kind of going back and forth from the top end of the range to the bottom end. And we did get some breakouts last week, but they're kind of uh, pulling back inside that range. But I think the underlying indicators that we'll look at today will uh, kind of convince you that uh, this is just a little bit of a setback on being an over, a little bit of an overbought market, and I think we should be able to uh, uh, see the Dow Jones and the uh, S&P 500 join the NASDAQ and Russell at record highs. So um, first thing we want to look at in here is the Dow Jones. As you can see, we, we looked at this chart here the last couple of weeks where it was coming out of this triangle period. Let me grab my little pointer here. And uh, we had that gap up here on uh, Monday, get another gap up on Tuesday. And now we're kind of going sideways to slightly down, which um, which, is, which is normal when you have a breakaway uh, out of out of a, a trading range like this. Uh, I, it was overbought. Now you can see the 30-day uh, stochastic, which I like to look at, coming back down where it's not overbought anymore. Uh, the accumulation, the advanced, advanced decline line here is a little bit sideways in this one, but I'll show you another one that shows we're getting some pretty good participation on this. Uh, also with this breakout, you can see the uh, 
the volume picked up a little bit. Now that we're kind of going sideways, it's coming off a little bit. But um, to me, this looks like we're probably going to go a little bit sideways here, and I would expect to see the uh, Dow Jones break out. It could break out tomorrow if you know, Apple's now part of the Dow. So if they, they come in with knock out, you know, blowout earnings, we could see that uh, the Dow jump up and finally take out that uh, and get to the, towards that 21-2 area. Now here's one that uh, you want to look at. This is the uh, uh, New York AD line. Uh, this is a running total of uh, advancing issues versus decline issues. That's making an all-time high. Uh, it'll make another new, new all-time high uh, probably the next day or two. This shows you that there's good participation in this, this rally higher. Uh, what I have on my, my target right now for the Dow Jones going forward into the end of the month and into the, uh, possibly the 1st of June would be about 21.5. So I think we could probably see a uh, decent May where we could probably get another 300 points out of the Dow. Um, another thing I like over here with this breakout, we saw a big jump in the number of new 52-week highs up to the 300 level. We hadn't seen that since uh, back here in March. Right around here is where we saw the uh, Dow make a new high uh, back on March 1st. That's the old-time record high. So we uh, uh, beat that a little bit, had a little bit of a pull back here the last couple of days. I think the next rally we'll see that jump up here around 275, 300 again. That, that's just pretty good um, participation. This is a little bit down here. I don't really see much of a under the new 52 lows. Although I would think this is probably some of the uh, higher um, uh, uh, dividend stocks on that. So again, this is kind of confirming that we should get get some more uh, upside with the Dow. The S&P 500, not quite uh, what we wanted to see. You know, we, we, here you can see on Monday where we, we gapped up above the 50-day, gapped up again, and we just butted up against this. Uh, what is it? The 23.99 area, which was the old, we need to get above 2,400 for the breakout. A uh, little bit of negative divergence on the 14-day uh, RSI on this one, but I do like uh, the MACD is, is, is looking higher to me on this. Uh, the stochastics are still showing a little bit of overbought, but on a 30-day, if you when you stay above 80, that generally means that you, the momentum is still uh, still stronger, and you want to you want to kind of keep, hold on to this as long as you're above 80. CCI, I don't really worry about that too much over here, but you are getting a little higher peak on that. So uh, I would like to see this thing. I think we'll see it over the next couple of days, get to 2,400. Today we're, um, we're at 2,388. So, um, you know, about another 10 points, which would be 70, 10, so be about, about another 70, 80, 90 points in the Dow which should, should help push the S&P 500 into uh, record, record territory. All right, here we are with the uh, NASDAQ. As you can see, you're having uh, you know the underlying uh, technical indicators are confirming this breakout over here. A nice gap off of this old highs uh, up here above 6,000 for the first time, and now we're just stair stepping a little bit higher each day. The, the one one bad part about this is that we are seeing a little bit of uh, you know a thinness on the uh, number of stocks breaking out to this. Uh, if you look over here. You know, we, we've looked at this chart several times, thought we are going to kind of go, go south a little bit over here. Uh, we are back to the top. I'd like to see this, this AD line for the NASDAQ get above this. You, know, you still have the Facebook, your Microsoft, your Apple, your Netflix, your Amazon, your Google, um, contributing an awful lot to that move. Um, they're, they're weighted heavy on a lot of the different indexes and the SPY and all. So we want to see this thing here break above this on the, on the NASDAQ AD line, which you can get at the market at a glance on the homepage of Market Edge. And once we see that breakthrough, I think that will uh, uh, let, let us see the advance of the uh, NASDAQ probably to about uh, 6,200, I think. 6,250, actually, is what we have on the uh, uh, target for that. Now, also, on, for the uh, S&P 500, the target on that is 2,435. So um, that would be about probably another 400 points I think we can see uh, in the Dow, and um, that should be the S&P 500 uh, with it. Now, this is the NASDAQ new high-low. Again, this I, I do like. Even though you have a small amount of uh, an over percentage of the move being done by you know maybe 9, 10 stocks, uh, this uh, last week where you had more than 300 uh, new 52-week highs in the, in the NASDAQ is, is a bullish sign. That means... 
you know, you, you do have that big leadership from the big caps, but you're also getting a, uh, you know, uh, some good participation that you haven't had for several months. This, this, as you can see here, you you only have a few stocks making new highs. We uh, we tripled that last week, which is a, a bullish sign, which means we, I, I think that's an indication that we can work our way higher. All right, now here's the Russell 2000. Um, we we got our breakout on this uh, last week to a new high. It's, it's come come back and it's. Some people would say this is a, a retest of uh, when we call this line a polarity line, which means the old resistance now becomes a new support. So as long as we stay above this uh, 1400, 1390 area and then, and then proceed higher, uh, that, that's a good bullish sign because it kind of uh, did a re little bit of a retracement uh, to fill in that, 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 that strong upward move. And I think we can see this, this thing also uh, punch out some new highs. You're seeing some positive divergence in the momentum indicator down here on the 14-day RSI, as well as uh, on the 30-day uh, stochastic, where you had this when you broke it out, you broke above 80. Now, on this 30-day stochastic, a lot of, lot of uh, buyers or traders will look for a really quick pop when this thing goes above 80, as you saw right over in here. Uh, that, that hit the 80 point, then they got a little bit of additional follow-through on that. So. Uh, this is confirming that uh, you know this, uh, you want to see the small caps participating. If this this thing here moves up higher, we're down a little bit today, but um, you know if part part of this I think is a little bit of profit taking after a, a pretty good run in in, this, in the semiconductors, especially the smaller semis and some of the biotechs, which also we'll look at those charts too. But I think this is just a little bit of overbought uh, area coming back here to test, and we'll we'll still start seeing the Russells move ahead here also in the next week or two. All right, here's that, uh, the one that keeps giving us a little bit of trouble. Here's that Dow Jones Transportation Index. We jumped above the uh, 50 and 100 day and immediately came back down below it. But what looks a little bit different to me this time, I don't think we're going to test this 9,000 area. I think we're just this positive momentum that we see in the uh, uh, RSI 14 uh, day and the uh, MACD, you're seeing some positive divergence in that as we're working our way higher. Here's the histogram is also showing a little bit of a bump up. Um, if we can see this thing get above 9,200, 9,250 area, that's going to be good. Right now we're at 9,113, up about 43 points. So we're right around the, uh, you know, still, still below the uh, 50 day, but you know, look, look for that to get to 9,200. And uh, I think that could be you know, a good sign that we'll get to test up here this 9,400 and uh, maybe at least get a test of the upper range. I, I'm not sure why this thing keeps, keeps coming down, but um, you know, we, we, if it, we, when we do get above 9,400 up towards this upper range, then that would kind of be the, the bell that we're going to get another nice, nice leg up in, in the broader market. Okay. Um, okay. Just to summarize with, with the major averages for the last week or two. Okay, we're, they're all in that process of breaking out, which which is good. Um, uh, let me go back one over here. Um, our earnings are coming in better. That's supportive of some higher prices. We've had. You know, negative earnings going back for uh, you know about a year and a half, two years. Uh, we're also seeing uh, the global economies, uh, especially over in Europe, that they're beginning to show signs of improvement. At the same time, the United States is, and that's kind of a rare event. You know, th over, I've been doing this for about 32 years, and normally you'll see one part of the global global economy get get strong, maybe like China as as we slow down, or Europe gets strong, we slow down, we get strong, Europe slows down. But you're kind of seeing uh, these, these global economies all starting to outperform or, or grow and expand at the same time, which is kind of a rare event. I think we're going to, that's going to help propel uh, the market, uh, you know, maybe towards the end of the year a lot higher. Now, one of the things that uh, I do do envision seeing towards the middle of the summer and towards the end of the year, I do think we'll see some normalized corrections because um, you know we've we've had this floor under the market from the Federal Reserve keeping rates down here around 0%, and that helped, uh, that kept the floor under the market because as long as you could go into the market and buy uh, high dividend stocks and make yourself four, three and a half, four or five percent, uh, people were going to put their money into that market rather than uh, go into bonds because they couldn't get anything there. So that kept the floor. But now the, the uh, upward advance is, is basically driven by the earnings and uh, people looking at maybe this new administration's uh, uh, pro-growth um, policies could expand uh, earnings a little bit and also uh, help the economy to, to get back and maybe and I don't I don't see three percent uh, anytime soon but 
you know, we can we can struggle along here two two and a half percent. I think the market can uh, gradually work their way a little bit a little higher. Also, um, the VIX currently is trading at about a ten year low. Uh, we're down yesterday. I think it was a ten eleven. You don't see a market uh, correction of you. Know, you flip this thing over. You're not going to see this thing fall down three thousand know, two thousand points when the VIX is that is, is around ten. But you start to see the VIX get up here. Start having some down. On down days where we where we lose 150 points, you start seeing the VIX get up here around 15, 16 area. Then you want to be start thinking, okay, well, maybe we're going to get one of these uh, five to 10 percent corrections. But as long as we stay under around 12, 12 and a half, maybe even 13, um, you're not going to get much more than 150 point uh, pullback in these things. So that's telling me also that uh, traders are anticipating a little bit uh, higher move in the in the broader market. Okay, once again, I wanted to bring up, up uh, as far as what May, May has done the last several years. It's actually been a pretty good month since uh, 2012. Like I said, from May to October in uh, 2013, the Dow, uh, the S&P 500 was up about 9.9%. 2014, it was up 7.12%. And since 1950, after presidential rank uh, election, May ranks as the number four best month of the year for the Dow, number three for the S&P. That's actually the, the uh, strongest month of the year for the NASDAQ. So uh, we seem to be living up to that again. Uh, right in here, we've had a pretty good start to the right start to the month. And we'll see uh, if that lives up to, it, to its hype. And, um, you know, like I say, we don't, want to, we don't want to be looking to sell in here. Maybe in June we can lighten up a little bit, but, but not here. So where do you want to go if we're going to add the positions in here? Well, first of all, the last one over here we just looked at was the technology sector, which uh, again is leading the way higher. You can see this trading range that we were into over here, a big gap up, broke out of the uh, trading range, and we've just been marching steadily higher. Again, that's on the uh, mostly the big cap names and more of the, uh, the, some of the software and the social uh, media type stocks like the Facebook, you know, the Apple and the Microsoft. Um, you know, maybe Netflix, not Netflix necessarily, but Amazon and Google. You're not you're not seeing this this breakout of this move such as much in some of the semiconductors, which were, were outperforming while this thing was going sideways. You also have some confirmation uh, on the buy side from the different indicators. Good positive momentum, a little bit overbought on the 14 dollar side, but I like them when they're when they're overbought. That means uh, they're overbought for a reason. The 30 the 30 day stochastic again is up here on 95. As long as that stays above 80 and above 50, that's that's good. And you have some good accumulation distribution in the uh, XLK. So I, was, I expect to see that that uh, move higher. Now the semiconductors, uh, they go a little bit more cyclical. You can see over here, you kind of had that fake uh, pop up here to to try to break out when the rest of the market did, and you've kind of rolled over. You had the AMD last week. Uh, you also had. Uh, uh, you know, Cypress uh, both popped up and rolled over on semiconductors, especially these, these smaller uh, guys. I think that you uh, you've kind of seen these. They'll probably go sideways for a little bit. You know, maybe they come back down here, test this 50-day, test the upward uh, trending line on on the semiconductor index, and then maybe you can go back into them. But um, this run from back here, from 700 to 1,000, uh, what 47 percent. Uh, uh, run on that. That's 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 a hell of a move, and I think that you'll see some uh, a little bit of stalling in that. Now, I, I do like Intel. I think that one looks good. But if you're going to go into the uh, uh, technology field, I think you ought to look more towards uh, you know some of the uh, bigger cap uh, names that are maybe in the software area, that type of thing. You know, maybe like Microsoft, Adobe, ADBE looks good. Autodesk, ADSK. Uh, Zillow looks good. The symbol Z. Facebook, of course, looks strong. FB, Wix.com, WIX. Those are a couple ideas in, in technology that you could actually uh, take a look at. Now, if you do want to buy some some uh, semiconductors on a pullback, I think you can look at uh, again Intel, maybe Micron, uh, Xilinx, XLNX looks good in here. Applied Materials, AMAT. But I, I would give the give some room to some of the smaller ones. I, Later on, I can pull a chart up, on, and you can see on AMD, we just looked at this a little bit ago, uh, the institution started selling AMD about uh, three weeks ago, uh, when we got around 14. And when you look at the indicators, this, this line here, if this was the, uh, uh, the up-down slope uh, from, from about here on in AMD, it was, it was a steadily s 
slope falling down and when, while it was moving a little bit higher. That's a sign that we'll look at if you want to look at the chart later um, where it was giving you a heads up that uh, you probably want to take some profits in that thing. Okay, next, uh, another place that uh, has outperformed recently is, is, the, is the financial sector. You know, it ran up here on, on higher rates and uh, the promise of some tax cuts. We thought that would be good. However, I think we've, we've been back in the trading range over here, and I don't think you want to jump in to, and just buy financials blindly in here. I would be more uh, prone to buy these things on a little bit of a, a pullback to this level, this lower trading range. Um, tomorrow, uh, we, we conclude the FOMC meeting for May. Uh, no one's expecting another uh, uh, a rate hike. I think they'll leave them pat on that uh, for, for that meeting. Um, now, if we do get a surprise, that could could shake things up, and maybe uh, you get a little bit, uh, you know, maybe you get a little bit of a pop in here. But I would I would allow the financials to come back here. You're also seeing some, you know, momentum starting to slow. You're below 50 on this. You're, you're still below 50 on the 30-day stochastic, which means um, you know, to me that that's a little sign to lean away. And here's the uh, AD line for the XLF, which is you can see this is uh, start waning down. Uh, winding down, meaning that people are, are taking profits in there, and they have been since uh, basically since the first of March. Okay, so um, have, so have be selective on your list if you're going to going to pick up any of the any of the uh, financials. You, you want to, want them to be a part of your portfolio later in the year, but but maybe not quite yet. Okay, another leader in here is the consumer discretionary sector. You can see that punching out a new high, working its way back and forth in a nice upward uh, trending channel. Uh, nice confirmation from the histogram on the MACD, 14-day RSI, also confirming uh, that this should break out the new highs. Nice accumulation in here. Um, it's a great-looking chart. Uh, we went over last week at the Raymond James conference. We we talked about uh, some of the areas where you wanted to be in certain industries. We talked a lot about casinos, which are their, our top, uh, uh, our strongest industry group right now. We looked at stocks last week, like uh, Wynn Resorts, W Y N N. Boyd Gaming, BYD, Las Vegas Sands, LVS. These were all punching out the new highs. Lodging also was one of the top industry groups. And that was uh, Wyndham Worldwide, WYN, Vail Resorts, MTN, Marriott, MAR. They look good in here. Caesars Entertainment, CZR, uh, Royal Caribbean. That's another uh, in this, in this uh, sector, RCL, which is good. And even some of your specialty retailers, which we've talked about. You know, you want to be... Be the big box stores, but but five below. F I V E has a good looking chart. Best Buy still looks good. B B Y Home Depot, H D, Lowe's, L O W. Those still have great looking charts, which uh, you know, they've had a heck of a run, and, and you know we may, you may get a little bit of a sideways to up movement, but uh, those are probably places that you can still uh, put some money into and pick up some of those stocks. All right, healthcare is another leader here. We had a nice pullback, came down. Got kind of tested this 50-day moving average. Now we're pulling up ahead of it. Um, again, you've got the 30-day above 80, which I like. The MACD gram, uh, MACD has just given another buy signal over here as we crossed above the 50-day and gapped up. Um, as far as the industries in the in the healthcare sector, what I like, um, look at medical supplies. That's one of the. Uh, I think that's number two on our group. You have stocks like Inogen. I N G N looks great. Boston Scientific, B S X, Varian Medical, V A R. Another strong one is medical products, uh, which include Hesca, H S K A, Wellcare Health, W C G, Humana. It's kind of a pricey stock. H uh, U M, Anthem, A N T M. These are stocks you could look at the healthcare products and medical devices. Uh, also look strong. Uh, Invacare, I B C. We just upgraded that to a buy. Medtronics. MDT, Globus Medical, GMED, and even Stryker, another uh, high cap, SYK. That's, uh, those are stocks in, in great industries. The charts look good on those. I think they, they've got uh, higher to go. Now, here's the biotech uh, uh, chart. Now, this, um, this is the NASDAQ biotech, IBB. We've looked at this thing since last summer, I believe. And every time we keep going, okay, once it cracks through 300, you're going to get another nice leg up to this thing. It could go as high as you know 450 or so. We're back up here testing this, uh, testing the 300 level again. Bounced above it briefly. Now we're, you know, we're 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 knocking on the door again. I think you're seeing some nice accumulation down here. Uh, momentum is still looks strong. I think it's it's not overbought. 
you've got a nice uh, you know 30 days above the 88 level here, which which means that uh, the, the momentum is strong. MACD also just gave another buy on this. Um, uh, and when you do see the IBB cross above that, uh, it, it's, it's down a little bit today with with semiconductors. I think that's um, just just the fact that they were they, they had a heck of a move over here, you know, during this last, last week and. Uh, I think maybe you just have you have a little bit of a pullback. Maybe you get down to this uh, uh, 50 day. Let me check where we are today on this. Okay, we're 297.75. So, you know, we're you know you're, you're still up here. Um, you're, you're down uh, you know half a percent. So, uh, it's, it's trying to get some more positive momentum uh, with with the biotechs. I think it's important that uh, you know you always want to have a handful of those in your portfolio. A uh, good way to keep keep a handful of those is when you get something to be, you buy it at 20, gets to 40, you can take out your money, keep half the half the position, and just play with money and, and reinvest in something else. So uh, try to do that, and uh, you know I think I think we'll see some good gains in the biotech uh, sector going going forward. Okay, another one in here that's uh, breaking out of a this kind of looks like the Dow Jones where we had that little uh, triangle going on here, and we gapped up above to the breakout last week. Came up here, bounced off the new highs, kind of going sideways. A little bit of negative divergence in here on the breakout, but um, in this, industrials look uh, look good, and that though they should go a little bit higher on the uh, you know as the economy uh, you know improves. One the the one caveat with this is that you want to keep an eye on the U.S. dollar if you're buying some of the uh, uh, large large caps that are multinationals. If, if the U.S. dollar, if the say if the Fed would uh, raise rates tomorrow and maybe uh, kind of go against the rest of uh, the global economies and, and kind of outperform on raising rates. That could uh, dampen the, the momentum on some of the industrials. But at this point, I think they look good. As long as the rates stay low, we should be able to get to see the industrials work higher. And also, uh, you know, just, just stocks like in the uh, you know, defense sector, uh, they've had a heck of a run up. But, uh, uh, you yeah, know, I think that you can still – Still be uh, selective on on some of the uh, industrials. Another one I think you, you can still put money to work on here. This is the materials sector. Uh, again, we were we're, at, we were in a trading zone, gapped up to the top of the uh, breakout area on uh, Monday, Tuesday, broke out again. We've come down here. We've bounced off of this the polarity line. Okay, this this old resistance now becomes support. You're bouncing off of that. Um, we're up today. In fact, the sectors that are uh, we're kind of in a mixed market today, but healthcare, materials, industrials, uh, and REITs and technology are the ones that are moving higher in here. I like this. You're actually getting some uh, confirmation for the technical indicators that we should be able to go higher, uh, you know, positive divergence for a change on that. Uh, in, the, in the materials, um, you can look at the home construction stocks. They've kind of slowed down a little bit, but I think they've got another leg higher. That would be KB Homes. The symbols KBH, Meritage Homes, MTH, Toll Brothers, TOL. I think that uh, you know, we can get another leg higher, uh, maybe towards the end of the summer. Uh, other there's building material stocks. One that I love. Uh, it's called Builder Source. The symbols BLDR. Um, just works its way higher and making new highs. It's a low price stock. You get some good leverage. Masco, MAS, Sherwin Williams, SHW, Armstrong Worldwide, AWI. Those are a couple of good ideas. Vulcan Materials, VMC, a real, a real strong-looking chart that I think you can, uh, you know, pick up. You want to be exposed to some of those stocks. Okay, last one we talked about two weeks ago. Um, you know, Murphy's Law kind of pulled back in here, but it just pulled back to the 50-day. But I do like the upward trending channel that we're uh, going back and forth in. I think uh, the real estate REITs are uh, an area where you could, uh, you know, put some money to. You got having a good participation and good accumulation down here. It came down with a 30-day, bouncing off that 50, and this should start working its way higher again. Um, this has, uh, you know, a lot of people th think that uh, higher yields will hurt REITs. Um, not so much, because right now I think this move higher is more about um, income and property values going higher rather than just a play off, you know, a couple, about a year and a half, two years ago, the play on REITs was maybe, um, you know, well, I'm looking for a, a higher yield on those. But if you go into the REITs, you know, I don't want you to jump into – into something that's paying, you know, seven, eight uh, percent. Keep, keep it, you know, uh, realistic, and keep your uh, look for something that's yielding, you know, three, three to five percent with good growth prospects, good properties, 
and I think you'll you'll be good. The, the ones that uh, may be stuck paying the you know, seven, eight, nine percent, uh, if they cut the dividends, you're going to get hurt on those things. But this this looks like an area of, that's underperformed the market for uh, several years. Uh, I don't have a list. If you go to the Market Edge Industry Group on this, you can pull up real estate investments in the industry group. Uh, you'll get some good ideas like Anale, the symbols NLY. They've got a good-looking chart. Uh, Equity Residential, EQR, and a couple other ones. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. I've gone over the, a, lot, a lot of time in here. But, uh, again, I don't, don't be in any hurry to sell in May. I think you're going to sell yourself short in here. The CTI, which I think we've got back on, on track uh we're back on this last call, but we went even though we went in near the high, uh, the four different uh, uh, leverage e, uh, C, uh, ETFs are are profitable on this call again. And I think uh, the upside potential we, we we can still keep hold on to those and make some money. Um, like I said, we're back in sync um, as we wean ourselves off of the uh, you know the Fed stimulus. Um, you know the Fed the Fed's still very accommodative for stocks to move higher. So over the next few weeks, um, I want to bring this up too. We are going to be bringing out uh, our next, our new website. Uh, if you haven't seen it, some of you may be doing the beta testing on that. But what I'm going to try to do is uh, on, on these PowerPoint presentations, I'm going to try to start introducing our charting package. It's got, got some great features, easy to use. You don't have the Java applet. It's, it's a web-based charting package, which which works good. And then maybe in about a month from now, uh, our whether we do it on a Tuesday or whether I do it on a Saturday and just record it, we'll, we'll do a whole demo and walk, walk you through some of the new changes uh, of the new site. I think you'll enjoy it. It's much easier to, to, to use. It's a much cleaner site. And with that, I'm going to open it up to questions and uh, see what we have and uh, go about 10 minutes if you have something here. Uh, will Apple be in the S&P 500 too? Isn't Apple in the 500 now? I thought Apple was in the fi uh, S&P 500. If, I, if I'm mistaken, I apologize, but they come out I think tonight. So, um, you know, I could, that, that, that could propel uh, the, the market a little bit higher. They, they, they've run up, they've had a nice run up into earnings. They're up uh, a buck today up to 147. So they've had a, Apple's had a heck of a run, but uh, uh, you know, sometimes people when they have a, have a run like that, people will sell the news. Uh, on it, but we'll see what happens with that. You have Facebook, I think tomorrow. That that's also run up uh, pretty pretty strongly in the earnings. It's gone from about 120 to 150 something. Uh, Home Depot, I think, comes out tomorrow. That that's also had a big a big move. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes here. I don't see any questions coming in. Oops, there's one. Uh, nope. Okay, yeah, Apple is part of the, the 500. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you do have some questions outside of this, uh, you can you can send them to the doc at marketedge.com or support at marketedge.com. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I do appreciate you taking some time out of your out of your day to, to join us, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.